first question is uh, being an offensive guy. I guess thinking about your staff, are you going to call your own plays? Are you going to yep. hire an offensive coordinator? Both. Both. You will call plays, but you will have a separate offensive coordinator. I'll have an offensive coordinator. What attracted you to this position in particular, coming from FBS to FCS? Yeah, just knowing and understanding the tradition of being here. Uh, you know, I played Division II football at Angelo State University, who had played Magnese. I've known about Magnese for a long time. Uh, it's like I talked about, this brand uh, is, is nationally known. Uh, it, it's, it's well known in the coaching family. Count me in on that, and, and when this uh, when the job came open, uh, obviously had high interest in it because I knew it played in a great conference. I knew you could re recruit great talent here. I knew there were great facilities here, and just an opportunity to to, to be a head football coach at a place that's that's uh, always had tradition and a place that's supporting and, and set up uh, for success. Coach. Um <clears throat> we talk about filling a uh, filling the coaching staff. Uh, you said by January. Is it is that is there a certain deadline for you to have it filled, or is it just kind of get it gradually get filled in? I mean, you know, it, it's about getting the right guys, and you know, at what point in time is that? I mean, you'd like it done before we get guys on campus and with officials and all that stuff. So right now, I'm just combing through, uh, making sure that that. Uh, uh, <coughs> You know, got the right fit. Talking, getting, you know, talking to the right references and, and calling people. Um, you know, again, making sure we got a right fit for, for who we want here, uh, why we want them here, and uh, you know, if they're in alignment with the, with our vision and direction that we're going. Uh, with given your background, how important is hiring a defensive coordinator, and like how much autonomy will he have? Or will this kind of break? Yeah, I mean, extremely important. Uh, you know, just that, that, that he's going to handle that side of the ball. Um, and if there's a, a you know, guy that's had success, uh, guys that's experienced with it. Um, so, then, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an important hire and obviously one we're, we're in the process of. Did you ever uh, give any consideration to retaining any of the previous coaches? Uh, and if not, why not? Um, Yes, and you know it's just about making sure you got the right fit and the, and the, the right guys, uh, you know, going for your program. And you know, at the end of the day, um, I got hired here to win football games, and you got to win it. Uh, you know, with the decision you make on a daily basis and during the season, you got to feel 100% confident in those decisions, 100% in on those decisions. And when you get an opportunity to to be in this position. Want to make sure you got the, the right people involved, and, and that's what it's about. Uh, is you know, there's a there's a trust factor there. There's a you know factor with those guys being successful and being able to pick get the right guys. And again, go back to um, you know, with there, there's a nice pool to be able to choose from uh, of guys that want to go. Guys want to come here, coach. Well, just to clarify, I mean. Will you consider people that are on, that are currently on staff? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Um, Bruce talked upstairs a little bit about. We've talked a lot about with McNeese attendance and all that, and an exciting brand of football offensively. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to make? How do you balance the winning with excitement? I think they breed each other. I mean, I think I think they go hand in hand. I mean, if, if you if you win. You know, people are going to show up and, and support it and, and want to be a part of it. It's, it's you know, when winning's going on, it's a, it's a great environment, it's a great atmosphere. Uh, you, you tie in the community, uh, you tie in the, the university, you tie in our, our students. Um, I mean, it, it just really all fits up, and, and you kind of uh, really don't have one without the other. Uh, you know, so you put a winning product on the field, um, you know, it's a, People gonna show up, and then everything. It's everything I was talking about being able to, to feel this stand and have home field advantage. When we play at home, we have home field advantage because it matters. I mean, it matters to play at home. When you go other places and play on the road, it's tough. It's tough to win on the road. I mean, whatever night it is, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's tough to win on the road. And you 
come home and you've got a great environment, <coughs> great stadium that you can pack this place up and, and the cannons are firing, like I said, and the cowbells are ringing. And I mean, we need to make this place a home field advantage for us, you know, when, when we're at home. Because it oh, matters. The, the, latest, the latest move really over the last, gosh, maybe four or five years at this level is to bring in transfers, to bring in JUCO players and things of that nature to really <laughs> kill boys quickly and yes, maybe win quickly. Is that part of the part of your strategy or are you, are you a little bit more old school and we're going to develop from the high school? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you just got to evaluate. That, that's the biggest thing with those transfer guys. And anytime you take a, uh, whether it's a recruiting a high school kid, transfer guy, or a JC guy, it, it's about evaluation and finding out as much information you can about that player. Uh, and, and uh, you know, does he fit us? You know, that, that, that at the end of the day, does he fit us? Um, and, you know, is, is he going to be in alignment with our culture and helping us, helping us win? And, you know, that's kind of where it starts. So, uh, you know, not opposed at all with, uh, with transfer guys. <laughs> guys uh, but it's about having the right one, you know. With it being so late, with this year being early recruiting, it being so late in the process, have you been in contact with guys that were previously recruited for McNeese? Mm -hmm. And how many of them do you like? And how, do you have to go through all of them again? Yeah, so I'll, in, in that process right now, and uh, just going back through, so I've, I've had a contact uh, with a few of them, and obviously we'll be back on the road hitting, you know, hitting recruiting. Uh, but, you know, as far as the early signing day, um, you know, let this, I mean, we just went through the full season of it, about to, meaning that it, in its first year. Um, so, you know, um, it's probably not as dramatic as what people make it out to be about not signing a ton of kids and stuff on, on early signing day. I mean, what it gives us an opportunity to do is give them, give full evaluation and go, uh, you know, again, go recruit the right kids. And then, you know, what you do, if you fill up in December, all right, and now, now there's six, eight kids out there that have, that have filtered back down from, you know, some other place, you know, now, now you can't go get them, you know, so. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity for us to go recruit kids uh, and go evaluate kids and, and have contact with kids, uh, you know, just rounding out this class. So as far as signing day, early signing day, you know, I, I'm, I'm good. And, and uh, you know, some of our committed guys, I just had this conversation last night. If, they, if, they, if they're 100% committed to us and, and Magnese, then you want to sign them in December, then sign. You know, and we'll, we'll, obviously we're going to honor that. and, and uh, Appreciate that, you know, but, but I know we got some guys. We're going to have officials and all that coming up uh, after January with our full staff. And, you know, we're the same way. We're, once we get everybody here, we'll be on the road full board recruiting and uh, going finding the best student athlete that we can bring on this campus. Is it at this level more a wait and see because you want to see what trickles down from the top level? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you still got to have your basic guys, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's where I'm trying to get caught up on right now. And then, you know, just uh, again, you go back to you know, staffing, uh, my relationships with, with, with a lot of guys down in this, you know, south, uh, south region, uh, where I've, you know, being able to reach back into those guys and, and, um, and our connection, being able to utilize those. But yeah, I mean, uh, it, a little bit of it is. And, uh, you know, the good thing is just go create a board, go create a pool of guys and kids that, that we feel really good about and, uh, you know, go, go attack those guys. Coach, uh, the, the current quarterback, uh, who, Pretty much redshirted Cam Smith, Delray Beach, Florida, if I recall. Was he ever on the radar at South Florida? What do you know about him from his prep days, and what kind of talent uh, do you? Yeah, I, I really don't know much about him, no, no. so I really can't. I, really, all those questions to answer all those questions, probably no, because <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't. I know I know he's here, but uh, as far as anything else, I really don't. I and don't a follow up to that, you've got you've had a string of some uh, some pretty talented quarterbacks yeah. and offensive players. What, what what's the magic pill for you? Where's the where's the dust come in? Uh, in developing players, especially at the quarterback. Yeah, um, you know, number one, it's going to start with a guy that, that's, uh, you know, got some God-given ability, pretty talented, being able to throw the ball, and then you just got to continue to, to coach them, develop them, um, you know, through the off season, through the summer, uh, through camp, and, and then through the season. But, you know, the great thing about our offense, if you look down that, that, uh, that paper, that, that group of guys, um, there's no cookie cutter with it, you know. Uh, all those guys are a little bit different. There's a there's a pocket passer in there. You know, there's a couple pocket passers. There's a couple dual threat guys. You know, there's mm -hmm. there's something every bit in between, and that's what great about is great about our offense is we're able to just you can kind of fit a guy into our scheme and our system. So, you know that, that that's uh, that's been positive for us. You know, that's a talented group of guys that uh, that you look at in that book. Uh, but 
they're all a little different, you know, but at the end of the day, I think we're going to look for the quarterback, you know, be the most competitive guy on the field. The guy's going to be high character, got to be able to throw the ball well, and if he can if he can extend the play with his feet and do those things, then, you know, that, that's just a plus for us. Uh, but, you know, recruiting a quarterback, very highly competitive guy. Uh, guy's got to be able to throw the football. Um, you know, and the, and the guy that's won games, you know, you look at the winner and the kid that carries those intangibles uh, in that spot. So you look back at those guys you're talking about, you know, they really match that with those qualities. Bruce, um, with the, obviously coach has experience with quarterbacks and developing them. We haven't seen great development in quarterbacks over the years here from year to year. Is that, was that an important thing that he's developed quarterbacks in the past for you guys to look at? It was a combination of all of the above, Jim, from, as we talked about upstairs, from the involvement with the relationships with the players, with the community, and the success that he's had uh, with his offense, his knowledge of knowing where to go to get good defensive coaches too. So it was the, the fact of that he is very well-rounded and ready for the head coaching position. With that in mind, Coach, we talked a lot about at this level, you may not get the God-given talent guy, but how much is development at the FCS level important compared to getting the talent? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I think that's what recruiting's about. It's about you know, about evaluation. You know, go find that guy because there's guys in this southern region. There's good football coaches, all right, and there's good football coaches throughout the country. But down here, you got really good football coaches. So, you know, what you're able to do is just go evaluate, go find that guy. Uh, that, that maybe you got to you know, tweak something here or there, okay? So, so absolutely, I think it's huge at any level. That's the one thing that, that I will say. It doesn't matter, you know, you know, what that middle letter is, whether, you know, it's B or, or C, you know, but what you gotta go do is, is develop them, all of them, from the quarterback position, all, you know, running backs, all line, D line, linebackers. I think it's about continued development with all those kids. And I'm talking about, you know, strength and conditioning wise, uh, skill wise. Um, that's why you go hire quality coaches and, and to develop and teach and, and move those guys to get them to be able to produce at a high level. But, you know, like I said, at all those levels, same thing. I mean, you're constantly coaching those guys. When you look at that list, Jimmy Garoppolo, constantly coaching that guy. Shane Bouchel, constantly coaching that guy. Quentin Flowers, constantly coaching that guy. You know, Dane Evans, constantly coaching that guy. So, you know, it, it's about making those kids, you know, better. I mean, it's what we talk about. We're being to get better business, and it's the same with those guys. But you know, you get the thing you're limited, uh, you know, with in college is, is how how often are we able to have our hands on those kids and being able to, you know, you're talking about camp, the season, and spring ball, you know, so you're a little bit limited in, in that time. So you gotta, you gotta coach a mess out of them during fall camp, you gotta still coach a mess out of them during the season, and then during spring ball, you, you get those, those days going, and uh, that's where you gotta really lead them going into the summer. Uh, because the summer's going to be up to them. You know, that's where your leadership comes in. And then those guys want to be really great at the end of the day. If they continue what they got out of spring ball through the summer, then it carries right into camp. Recruiting-wise. Uh, quality coaches, a guy like Matt Maddox has followed you everywhere. Is that somebody that you're going to consider bringing on? Yeah, I mean, just with that staff, I mean, yeah. I mean, I got a, I got a group of, of uh, uh, talented coaches, uh, you know, that, that I'm still assessing and looking at and recruiting. And, uh, and, and and obviously trying to get here at Magni. So yeah, I mean, he's, he's one of them. Have you made an offer to anybody yet? Um, no, nah, close. I mean, I'm close with it. I mean, there, there's a few guys that, that, that got a couple offers out there. Uh, and, then, and then a couple, of, like I said, I'm still getting information on guys and making sure it's a fit. Coach, you, you took this job with Magnus in the Southland and in, in, in FCS. Yes, sir. Was there any discussion of like, okay, uh, uh, this is a great job, but is there any plans for McNeese to, to make the move eventually and try to get or at least discuss the, the upward move to FBS? Yes, sir. No, that's part of the discussion? No, sir. Not at all? No, sir. Coach, uh, how do you feel your time – well, two things. How do you feel your time at USF ended? And also, do you feel like this is kind of a fresh start, not just in the sense that it's a new school, but it's also your first uh, head coaching position? Yeah. No, uh, I mean, great opportunity, great success. You know, with Coach Strong and, and at South Florida, I mean, had an opportunity to coach some talented kids. Um, you know, a year ago being 10 and 2, uh, you know, what we were able to do this season, uh, you know, with a younger group of guys and breaking a new quarterback. So, you know, I, I, uh, 
I love those kids. I mean, I have multiple conversations with uh, with ex players, I, uh, or, you know, guys that I just coached. I you know talked to one last night and, and uh, quite a few during the day yesterday. So uh, you know, had a great opportunity there. It was a great place. Uh, we had success. You know, and and uh, appreciate and, and love those kids that I was able to coach there. Um, being from Texas, coaching in Texas. How is your relationship with Texas coaches right now as far as recruiting goes? And do you think you have a at least a footprint in that area? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, one of the best things about uh, Angelo State University, where I went to college at, it produces the most high school coaches in the state of Texas. So not only my fraternity of football guys I played with, but, but guys that just went to school there that are sitting out and that are Texas high school coaches. There's not many schools in the state of Texas. Uh, where there's not an Angelo State guy there, and like I said, I was a high school coach, uh, you know, for right at you know for nine years in, in Texas, and uh, so the relationships not only coming from college, but I was able to grow uh, during during my time doing that, and then as a GA at the University of Houston, and one my my one season back in Texas. I mean, everywhere I've been on my resume, coaching in college, I recruited Texas and recruited kids. So I stayed in contact with. I mean, part of. Uh, I mean, I had multiple people reaching out to me saying, I got kids, I got kids. You know, when are you going to come see me? You know, sending me huddle stuff. So, absolutely. And, um, you know, it's all about relationships and knowing people, trusting people, and knowing that, that they, uh, you know, you go into that certain school, you know, that you're going to get a quality kid. And, uh, you know, that, that, that stuff matters. Uh, you know, go back into staffing, that's the same thing, being able to hire guys that got ties in this direct region and area. Uh, that are going to be able to help us get our foot, you know, instantly in the door at a lot of schools. First time coaching in Louisiana, what is your main thing you're going to do to kind of establish ties with the high schools around here in the state? Yeah, get out. I mean, that, that's the number one thing. I mean, you know, it's it's good and everything to, to get on the phone with guys, but I want to go get in front of coaches, go shake their hands, be, you know, be excited about recruiting their kids. Again, you know, be, I've said this before, I'm a high school football coach who has the blessed opportunity to coach in college. You know, at the end of the day, it's about relationships. I mean, I've, dri I've driven a bus, you know, I've picked kids up, dropped kids off, done laundry, mark fields, uh, you know, you name it at the high school level, I've done it and had that opportunity. You know, was it coasting the, the seventh and eighth graders, you know, coast the freshman, coast it all the way up. So, I mean, just walking in there and being able to know exactly what they deal with on a daily basis, uh, you know, matters. And then just knowing that, that, that uh, our doors are always open uh, for any high school coaches to come see us, come come watch us practice, come be a part of what we're doing, uh, you know, because we're going to be out and about and we're going to be recruiting their kids, you know, and, and, that, and that's what about. So we want to have great relationships across the state uh, and, and for all the high school coaches to know that Magnus doors are always open to high school coaches and, uh, and their kids that come see us at any time. Bruce, he obviously, the coach has, has been in demand. He's made a lot of stops in a short period of time and kudos to you. Um, did that give you any trepidation with this hire in regards to short stays at, uh, at FBS schools and how long will you be able to retain him? I mean, this is a, a coach that obviously is young and has made a lot of upward moves. Well, none whatsoever. We were looking for the best fit, the best fit for now, uh, along with the fact with, that he has been successful uh, with all of his uh, offensive coordinator positions mm. and he's been very popular with his players. So as far as going to the future, that took no effect to us whatsoever. Uh, if people come calling, that means that we've chosen the right person uh, to, and we're gonna do everything we can to retain uh, him. So we want him here for a long time. Yeah. Uh, are you a patient coach? Meaning, you know, coaches that, you know, coach speak is, hey, you know, three years to get it, to get it rolling, to get my recruits in here. How impatient or patient will you be? Uh, patient, you know, as far as, as uh, and I don't know if you're referencing back to just like going down my resume, no, no, is no, that no. what you're I'm asking about, about? Building a program and, okay. and putting it on the field and winning. Absolutely. Well, just like I told Bruce and, we, and we've talked about, my feet are firmly here. My feet are here at Magnese. And what I want to do is establish and, and build a program. I mean, here's what I know. I've been in this profession, you know, whatever it is now, 15 years. The thing about this profession is you, you can't be you can't be halfway in and looking somewhere else. I learned a long time ago when I was a high school football coach, the coach told me the big time is where you're at. So I've always thought that. When I was at Lakeview High School, that was a big time job to me. When I was at Abilene Cooper, that was a big time job to me. When I was at Eastern Illinois, that was a big time job to me. 
And it's, it's no different sitting right here today. This is a big time job. It's a big time opportunity. And my, I, as long as they'll have me here, it's how long I want to be here. I want to build a successful program. I know the long standing tradition that's been here. Uh, that that's the thing about this place. It, it's not a fairy tale what happens here. You can look kids and I and say you can win a Southland Conference Championship right here. It's happened. You walk out of the stadium, it's across the right across the front of them. Okay, national championship played for two of them right here. Okay, so that that's not a that's not a fairy tale. You know, I was at Eastern Illinois for a year and a half. We were the number two team in the country. Got beat in the third round. Was that close to living that dream and, and the reality of that? So no one, I know what it takes. Uh, and that, that's something I want to get accomplished. That still burns at me that that happened. All right, well, I, I, I can't do nothing about 2013, but what I can do something about 2019 and living in the now. And the reality is stuff like that, being able to accomplish those goals can happen right here at Magnet. So I, I, I'm, you know, I'm firmly embedded in this program and getting our program to the heights uh, and, and level um, that, that is expected. And, and again, that, that's why I sit here and why this job is appealing is because of the tradition, because of the success, because of the commitment, because of the community, you know, that makes it different. Been a lot of co places in the country that, that aren't like this and, and it's special, you, you know, and uh, you know, coming, being from the South, you know, I love it. And uh, you know, it, it, you know, whether you're in West Texas or, you know, you're in the Southwest region of Louisiana, like, you know, great people, you know, great Southern hospitality, great food, you know, great recruiting, great football, you know, and, and that's what, uh, you know, that's what we get up in the morning for. And it's the same here. And that's why I'm sitting here and plan on being sitting here for a while. And as far as your team philosophy and everything, I know you talked about explosive offenses. What are the things you're going to establish core values with this team going forward? Yeah, just, uh, you know, number one, we're going to hold our guys accountable to, to acting right and, and doing right. You know, it's, it's what I said to the presser. Like, the good thing is we're, we're not – we don't play today, but what we're doing is set a new standard today. We're going to hold our guys to be accountable, being great. Uh, we're going to stay in the get better business. We're going to be great academically. We're going to be great athletically. Be great socially. And, you know, that, that's, a, that's a constant deal uh, as a coach uh, that you demand that. And we're going to give I – mean, what you expect is what you get. And we're going to get that from our guys. We're going, again, I'm going to put together a great staff, and those guys are going to be not only experienced, successful coaches, but they're going to be better men. And that's what I want to do is put great men in front of our guys. Uh, just like I said, that's how you turn, you know, you have great men leading, leading young people that you make them into better sons, better husbands, and better fathers. And you get that, you get really good guys, and they're really good football players. You know, I mean, that, that's something special. And, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do here. Any more questions for Bruce or Tanner? All righty. Thank you all very much. Thank you all.